it all about Jesus and then we get to enjoy the overwhelming endless love. So, 
Um, my name is Ray Dehringer. I, I'm blessed to be on the exec team here, so thanks for joining us today. If you're a first-time guest, we'd love it if you fill out a connection card at this, it's in the seat back in front of you. Uh, if you do that, drop it off at the table next door. We have a gift for you of some worship music. And at home, if you're joining us from home, uh, take a look at your screen. If you have a prayer request, visit that website, or if you just want to connect with someone, that's how you do it, newhopevineyard.org slash connect. So, BKC Kids, Miss Pam's at the door waiting for you. Um, one more important announcement. So, on March 26th and 27th, the Vineyard of Toledo is hosting the Free Indeed Deliverance Training Conference. More info is available at www.vineyardtoledo.org or check out the poster at the side entrance. This is the only way to register for that event. You cannot register through the church, but we will do, we will do some carpooling here. So if you're interested in carpooling to that event, if you registered and you want to carpool, fill out a connection card and uh, we'll see how we can make that happen. As usual, we're not going to pass the offering basket today. There's a, uh, there's a box for, as you go out the door, so your tithes and offerings can go in there. Let's, let's pray for the tithes and offering. Oh, Lord, we need you now more than ever. Thank you. Thank you for all you do in our lives. Uh, help us stay focused on you through these crazy times, Lord. And, and Lord, we know all we have belongs to you, and we, we just cherish this opportunity to give a portion of that back, and, and we pray and hope we use that as your will would have to, to, to further your kingdom here on earth. And we, we bless these tithes and offerings in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Ray. Everybody say hi to Ray. He's an invaluable member of our team, and I appreciate him very much, as I do all of our leaders here, and uh, just super, super people. It's a great team to work with here at the Vineyard, and I feel very blessed. But uh, anyway, it's good to have you here. Uh, whether you're here in the building or here at home, we are glad to have you. My name's Tony, and I serve as the pastor here, and it's, uh, just, yeah, it's just good to be here, isn't it? And it's going to be a great day. It's going to be a great day because we woke up. We woke up, we're able to move a little bit, maybe, maybe a little stiffer than normal sometimes, but we're able to move, we're able to breathe and get breath in our lungs, we're able to worship the Lord, and that's what it's all about. God is good, all right? If, uh, if you've been following along on the email, uh, the I Am Change, the 40 stories in 40 days of Lent, uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. It's from the, the Vineyard USA. If you don't have email and you're like, man, I wish I could participate in it. I wish I could read th these people's stories, but I don't do email. Uh, I got some news for you. We actually have printed some out as they've come about, and we have them available on the resource table, which is right outside the sanctuary, uh, unless they're gone or they're, like, they've already been in uh, welcome table. Do we have any more on the welcome table? There's my informant there, she's telling me. Okay, well there's some more over on the welcome table as you head out then, it looks just like this, and if there's not there out there, you can have mine, okay? Uh, but I'd love for you to participate. There's some really wonderful stories. These are not stories from professional Christian people or pastors or anything like that. These are stories from people all around the United States who go to vineyard churches, just, just common folks like you and me who are just kind of hanging out, doing life together, and have been through some stuff and want to share their experiences. So check it out. I hope you'll be inspired. There's the first 12 there, and we'll be uh, putting them out as they, as they come out uh, throughout Lent, okay? Well, we have been going through Jesus 101, getting back to basics of who we are, back to basics of our faith, back to basics of Christianity, because it's just important to go back to the basics sometime and realize why we believe what we believe, why we do what we do. And uh, today we're starting our third phase of Jesus 101 called Transformation 101. I am changed. Uh, the Bible is all about transformation. It's all about changing. It's all about uh, being a little different than we were yesterday, to become more in the image of Christ. And so uh, through our, our Lenten time here at New Hope Vineyard, we're going to be walking through transformation and what that means. And so uh, we're going to talk today about the reason. 
the reason for transformation, the reason to change. And our scripture that's going to take us through this series is found in 2 Corinthians 3, 17 and 18. It'll be on your screens up here and at home if you'd like to join for us uh, with us. It is 2 Corinthians 3, 17 and 18. I'll be reading out a new international version today. All right? Here we go. Now, the Lord is spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Is that awesome? And we all, who with unveiled faces, I'll talk more about that actually next week, what that means and the significance, contemplate the Lord's glory, are being transformed into His image with ever-increasing glory, which comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. Let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we love you. We thank you. Whew, thank you just for that uh, amazing worship music today. Time to focus in on who you are. There's nothing, no mountain we can't climb up. There's nothing that will separate us for the love of God that is in Christ. Open our, our ears and our hearts to hear what you would say to us today, to absorb what you would say through your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Before we get started on this, I mentioned, you know, about our Lenten series and what we're doing for Lent. And uh, some of us have been raised in more traditional churches where that's observed a little bit more uh, purposefully. Uh, some of us have been raised maybe in a vineyard or a non-traditional church that uh, it's not talked about as much. And some of us may be new to this whole church thing altogether and go, I, I don't know what Lent is. I thought it was the stuff you find in your belly button. So <laughs> let's, let's look at, sorry about that. But here's the thing, does the vineyard observe Lent? What, what's the history of Lent? What's it all about? Well, let's start with the history of Lent. What is Lent? Okay, well, first of all, understand Lent is not a biblical command, nor does it even appear in the Bible, okay? And, uh, but what it is, it's a tradition. The season of Lent is a church tradition, and church traditions can be very good, as long as we don't make them a greater thing than Jesus himself. You know, traditions are good, especially if they help us to grow and know Jesus better. All right. Lent begins on Ash Wednesday, uh, which this year was on February 17th. And it continues for 40 days, not including Sundays, until the Saturday before Easter Sunday. Okay. Now, in the early years of the church, we're talking about the, the Roman Catholic Church in, you know, hundreds and hundreds of years ago, where Latin was spoken, Lent was called quadragesima, quadragesima which means the 40th. Lent itself, though, uh, our word for it comes from the old English word lengthen, which means the spring season. So that's where we get the word Lent, which is a lot easier to say than quadragesima, so that's good. Lent is described by most churches as self-examination and penitence. In other words, humble contrition or repentance, demonstrated by self-denial or sacrifice in preparation for Easter. So basically what it is, it's it, like Advent where we prepare for Christmas. During Easter, we prepare through a time of self-examination, of, of repentance and seeking God and focusing. And so though it's not commanded in the Bible, that tradition can help us grow, can it? So there are a few different theories of the beginning of Lent because no one knows exactly when and where it happened. Early church father, his uh, name was uh, Uranus of Lyons. He lived between about 130 and 200 AD, he wrote a fasting season in the earliest days of the church. But back then it only lasted two to three days, not 40. Okay. And uh, in 325 A.D., there's a very famous thing that happened called the Council of Nicaea, a very big thing in church history. It was uh, discussed a 40-day Lenten season of fasting, but it really was unclear of its intention, what it was used for. Originally, some writings say it was originally used for new believers to prepare for baptism, which they would do on Easter Sunday. And it was just for them. Some later writings say it was for the whole church, but all in all, it really wasn't very specific on the, the what's or the how-tos. But originally, 
as an outward sign of their penitence, uh, people would wear sackcloth and sprinkle with ashes. That's where we get the term sackcloth and ashes. It's also where we get the term Ash Wednesday. Uh, this tradition died out of the sackcloth and ashes around the 9th or 10th century, but a lot of traditional churches, if you go to their church on, a, on an Ash Wednesday service, will put a ash on your, on your head, a lot of times in the shape of a cross. Okay, Again, tradition, not biblical, but, but tradition that helps us focus on who Jesus is. But the fact is, churches practice Lent in very different uh, ways, according to their traditions and beliefs. Okay? So that's kind of what it's about. In early church, uh, the, the rules were very strict. You could only eat one meal a day during those 40 days, only the dinner meal. You could not have any meat, fish, eggs, dairy, or oil. So no bacon cheeseburgers for 40 days. Uh, in modern times, it's become a tradition of, of fostering just simplicity and, and self-control about sacrifice abstaining from, from cravings or desires to remind us to take that time instead to pray and refocus on who Jesus is. Now, recently, Len has become kind of a, a trendy thing, talking about, hey, I'm giving up this for Len. What are you giving up? And it, it's become kind of a trendy conversation almost of outdoing one another. But let's get back to our big question. Should we observe Len? Well, Here's the, here's the simple question I'll, uh, or answer I'll give you. If you feel that a time of fasting and contemplation, of focusing, would be helpful to your growth as a, as a believer, then absolutely. But not just during Easter. These things that we're talking about, fasting and contemplation of study, repentance, these are things we call spiritual disciplines, and they're things that we should be practicing year-round. It's just part of our everyday life as believers and so uh, go for it if you'd like. But, uh, uh, you know, again, keep it in its place of what it is. It's a tradition that helps us focus on spiritual disciplines, which then helps us focus on who Jesus really is. Okay? So that's kind of what Lent is about. And, uh, and this is how we do it here at the Vineyard. We, we have a series called I Am Changed, and we've passed out the 40 stories and hope you enjoy it. And this year for Lent, we're talking about I am changed, this transformation 101. So let's look at that today. And uh, today I'm going to give you three reasons for transformation. There's, there's tons of reasons, but let's, let's keep it simple uh, with three. And the first is freedom in Christ. We just talked about that. Growth as Jesus' disciple and change, becoming more like Jesus. So let's look at each three of those uh, individually. First is freedom in Christ, right? Freedom in Christ. 2 Corinthians, what we just read, 3.17. Now the Lord is spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Freedom. Does that mean that we have the right to just go do whatever we want? No, that's not what biblical freedom is. In fact, back in those days, uh, the people who, who he was speaking to, this audience that he was writing to, were under 613 Mosaic laws that they had to keep very strictly. And Paul was writing to say, look, no, you've accepted Jesus. Jesus came, he fulfilled those laws, and so now you are free from them. And everybody's like, yeah, and they're losing their mind, thinking, well, that means we're free to just do anything. Later, Paul writes in Galatians, uh, freedom, for freedom for the sake of being free. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. But not to rebel or indulge, but freedom to live as Christ commands, which is to serve one another in love. In fact, later on in that same chapter in Galatians, he says this, You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge in the flesh, rather serve one another humbly in love. So the part of the reason for transformation of freedom is to break us loose of rules and regulations that bog us down so that we can be free to love people. So we get out of the, the letter of the law and get into the spirit of the law, what it's really about. And that love is for the purpose of reconciling one another to Jesus Christ. We talked about that last month in Evangelism 101, didn't we? 
All right. The second part is growth. Growth as Jesus' disciples, right? And as Jesus' disciples, growth comes by following his will, his direction, right? So you hear that a lot in churches, right? Let's go do God's will. What is, people will ask you, what's God's will for my life? What's God's will for your life? And everybody's like, I have no idea what God's will is for my life. And my first recommendation is grab your Bible, pick it up, and start reading it, because there's a lot of stuff that'll tell you what God's will is for your life. Like serving one another humbly in love. There's a good one right there. Following the commands of Christ to bear one another's burdens, to reach out to one another and reconcile one another to Christ. So how do we know what his will is? Well, uh, let's talk about transformation through Romans 12, verse 2. It says this. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good and pleasing and perfect will. Right? Do not conform to the pattern of this world. In other words, when we come to know Jesus, we should look a little bit different. There is a transformation that happens. We'll talk about that in just a minute. But we don't conform to the world. We don't do what the world tells us to do. Our ideas of success will look different than the world's ideas of success. Things that bring joy to our heart is going to look a little different that, that brings joy to other people's heart. Right? Things that motivate us to do good things are going to be a little bit different. And then it says, and then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. Right? True spiritual growth comes when we put the ways of the world, that sin, those selfish desires behind us, and allow ourselves to be transformed by God. Just Sometimes it's a matter of going, look, God, I just need to give it to you. Please transform my life. Change my heart. Help me to have your mindset, God. Help me to think about you and think of others the way you think of them. Help me to look at others the way you look at them. Sometimes it's even, help me to look at my own heart the way you look at it. Because sometimes I look at me and go, I don't like me very much. And it's hard, and I haven't forgiven myself. And I'm broken, and I'm hurting. But God says, I love you anyway. Help me to look at myself that way so I can forgive myself, just like you forgave me. To know his will is to be, is, is to be renewed by his spirit. It's the same like-mindedness that Paul talks about when he says that we should have the same mind as Christ in Philippians 2. All right, so growth, and then the third is change, becoming more like Jesus. We're being transformed into the image of Christ to become more like the rabbi we have chosen to follow. And that is the goal of every disciple, is to become more like the master. The word disciple literally translates as student, right? But there's so much more implied than actually just someone who sits and listens to a teacher. What's intended here is that the student becomes just like the master, just like the rabbi, just like the teacher. And so that is our goal, to become more and more like Jesus every day. The second part of a passage that we used, 2 Corinthians 3, verse 18, says this. And we all, who with unveiled faces contemplate the Lord's glory, are being transformed into his image with ever-increasing glory which comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. The Lord who is the Spirit living in us transforms us more and more into the image of Christ as we follow the Master a little closer each time, each day, we, come a bit, we become a little bit more like him. And we should look like that to the people around us. We should, we should just be a little different. When we receive and acknowledge Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, guys, we are changed. Not we might change or we will eventually change, but we are changed. That's what we learn. When we accept the Lord as our Savior, when we say, Jesus, come in and be my Lord and Savior. I want you to rule my life. There is a moment there where we are completely poof, changed. Now, is there a, a growth process in there? Yes, absolutely. There is a growth, but, but that moment 
we're a different person. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says this. Therefore, anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. Start that over. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old is gone. The new is here. When we become a new creation in Christ, when we say yes to Jesus, we become that new creation. The old is gone. We need to quit going back and picking it up. The new is here. The new is here. And it doesn't say renewed or refreshed or even revived. It says we are a new creation. Brand new. Brand spanking new as if the day we were born, we are born again. That's cool. That's awesome. Because some of us, it, it happens when we're 7 or 8 or 10 years old and we're little and, and, and that's wonderful. That you don't know a life outside of that, really. And then there's some of us that are a little bit older and have gone through some stuff. There are some of us that continue to struggle with things and stuff in life. But God is saying, look, you know me. You are a new creation. You are brand new, just like the little baby that was born. It's fresh. It's new. Quit going back to the old stuff. Leave it alone. I got it. I took care of it. It's gone. Does that mean that, the, that, that there aren't maybe some scars that remain from that? No, those things happen too. When we go through those things, they're difficult and they're hard. And sometimes they make us go, okay, God, where are you? But the way I like to look at it is, man, maybe God is just trying to build his testimony in me. I've shared this story before and I'm going to share it again. One time... I was going through just some, some crazy stuff in my life, and I felt like God was millions of miles away, right? I feel like I'm praying, and the prayers are almost making it, but not even quite. They're just falling before they even get to God. Hey, am I alone in this? You just feel like you're in, in a desert, in the wilderness, and you're going, God, where are you? And I remember uh, going up for prayer. We, we'll have some prayer people up here to pray with you afterward. And I went up for prayer that Sunday, and it uh, just so happened that the people who were assigned to pray that Sunday was the pastor and his wife. And I went up and, and I said, hey, I, I just need some prayers. What's going on? I said, man, I feel like God is a million miles away. I feel like I'm praying and nobody's hearing it. I'm not feeling God anymore. I feel like I'm in the desert. I'm in the wilderness by myself. What am I going to do? I just don't know. Would you pray for me? He goes, I'd love to pray for you. Cool. Bring it on. Here we go. I had on my hands and he laid hand, they laid hands on me, started praying. This was the prayer. Lord God, if you have Tony in the desert for a reason, then just keep him there. <laughs> I'm like, uh, whoa, 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 we're praying wrong here. What's going on? This can't be right. And he just goes, and then teach him what he needs to learn and then deliver him from it. Sometimes God allows us to walk through those wildernesses so that we learn to depend on him. I look over this last year, this just craziness that's been going on in our country and around the world, and we can look at it as, man, this has just been a drag, and look what all has happened. Or we can look at it as what a wonderful opportunity for the church to rise up and be the church it needs to be. What a wonderful opportunity to pray for those around us and go, you know what? When all else fails and is falling around us, Jesus remains the same. This has not been a, a year of woe. This has been a year of opportunity for the church. We can celebrate that. Sometimes we go through the wilderness because God is teaching us sometimes. And sometimes we stay in the wilderness because we get a little thick-headed. And don't want to learn. Speaking from personal experience here. It just happens. Transformation comes. We submit to God's will. And say, I'm ready, Lord. Teach me. Teach me. So again, those, those three reasons for, for uh, transformation. Freedom in Christ. Growth as Jesus' disciples. Change. Becoming more like Jesus. The image of our Lord. I'm going to ask our worship team to come back up. Abby and Becky, please.
I'm going to ask our prayer team just to get prayed up and ready to pray and then take your places. If you need prayer today, there will be people on both corners of the, the front of the sanctuary. But let's just take a few moments, maybe in our own hearts, and just celebrate that transformation that God has created in us. Let's go back to that day we said yes to Jesus and remember how on fire we were, how relieved we, we were. Maybe for you there was a weight that had been lifted and you're just like, whoo, I can breathe now. Whatever your experience was, maybe for you it was a little more subtle. And you said yes to Jesus and there was just this peace that fell on you. Maybe a quiet touch. Jesus works sometimes in the storms and in the fire and in the earthquakes, but he also operates in the whisper. This month we will continue to talk about transformation. So we follow the I Am Change series, what it means to be transformed, what, it, what we need to do to be transformed, and then what the results are when we are transformed, what it looks like to be transformed. You guys are called, every single one of us here, for an amazing purpose in Christ. All of us are as important in this family as everybody else. Paul says it's like a, it's like a body. Everybody has a whole bunch of parts and every single one of them are just as important and you are whether it's your, your first day here or your hundredth day here, you're just as important to us today. And even more so, you're as important to God today as always. And again, whether you're sitting here or you're sitting at home, this is one family. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, you are, you are a good, good Father. And we worship you. Thank you, Lord God, for, for taking us and plucking us out of our mundane, hurtful, sinful, everyday life and changing our hearts to renew us, to, to make us brand new. The new is here, the old is gone. Father God, forgive us when we allow uh, ourselves to be tempted by the world, when the world just starts looking a little too good and we allow ourselves to drift that way or go back to the baggage that we've left behind. And know, Lord God, that we can always turn back around to you and follow you again fresh and new every single day. We love you, Lord, and we give this time of worship to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Larry, has, Larry, come on up and stand here so the people can see you at home, okay? About 20 years ago, I had an experience, an experience that each one of you can have. You never know when it's going to happen. A lady between Dayton and Cincinnati prayed for God to come somehow and let her know if he was real. She had accepted the Lord over the television. She was crippled for life and she was dying. And she said, I just want to know if you're real. Send somebody to tell me. And one day in my truck as I'm going through Bettsville, I come up to the first traffic light and the Holy Spirit come to me and said, you're to call a woman and it told me the name of the woman and where and let her know that you heard from me. And so I did that. It changed your life. It renewed her life. 
Her parents, who she had not seen for four or five years, who she blamed for the situation she was in, she finally forgave them. There's freedom in Jesus, freedom in the Lord. And I'm not talking about something that was 200 years ago. I'm, I'm just saying 20 years ago. And when you pray, I don't care who you are, when you pray, God's listening to you. Believe me, he, he just really is. I'm nobody special. We're all special in that sense. And, and you just, uh, you, got, you got to remember that what comes out of your mouth, God hears it. And uh, he's the most forgiving person there ever was. And uh, I, just, I just can't help but realize that that experience I had let me know, not only that, that, that lady, but it let me know that God certainly is real. And uh, I just, when he talks to you, you know it. It's, it's in your knower, it's in your very being, and uh, you don't question it. But uh, God bless all of you for being here today. Uh, we have a real job ahead of us. That's getting our congregation back into this building and worshiping together as a family. And we have opportunities every minute of the day. When you see somebody in need, let them know that Jesus is real, that Jesus is who you need to talk to. And if they haven't done that, they haven't done everything they could do. Thank you.